Hey guys, as the generative AI is taking shape, it has become very important for us to learn coding. That too, Python coding. In this video, we are going to focus how can you make some SQL like query. For example, in SQL, you do a SQL select query and identify certain data from your data set. Similar thing we are going to do using Python data frame, using Pandas data frame to be specific and perform certain select queries to get some meaningful data from a large data set that we are going to learn today in this video. So let's attend this very important class around select queries or the SQL queries of data frame. So let's see how this is being done and how the execution is going to get us some meaningful data. Let's see in this video. So why delay? Let's get started. Before we get started, the very first thing is we need to have the proper data with us. For that, go to kaggles.com and then sign into this. Here you have something called data set in the kaggles.com and I'm going to work on a very particular data set. So type, so here the one you see New York City weather data 2019. I'm using this specific data. I have already downloaded this. All you do, click on this link and here you have it's a 4kb data but again it will give you a basis for you to perform the data frame sql like queries so it is good to download this specific data because it is only 4kb so any computer will support for you to you know go through the data and fetch you the required amount of data so this is good good data i mean you can go with this small amount of data but again this contains i'll show you how it will appear this contains the entire year data from 1st Jan January 2019, it contains the maximum temperature for that day in New, New York, the minimum temperature, average, uh, right, and then uh, snow. So all of these definitions, for example, what is HDD, what is CDD, if you like to know, there is something called view mode. If you do it, it gives the heating degree days, cooling degree days. So it has got so many information. Mostly we will be dealing with maximum temperature of the day. Uh, minimum temperature of the day so this data is good enough for you to start practicing so simply download this i have already downloaded okay so once your data is ready then you should proceed with the next set of queries that i'm going to show you in the data frame so let's get started now the very first thing once you have downloaded let's get started what you first do is import pandas as pd and then this is the syntax which I've shown in the previous set of videos as well. And you write a R string and let me print this data by saying df. I'm not using a print command. I told you the reason why I'm not using a print command because just by writing df, it gives you the proper formatting of the table. Okay. So if I hit on shift plus enter, this is my data. The so same data what you saw in the Excel has now been available on the Jupyter with this df variable so this df variable variable or the data frame variable now holding the entire sheet of data okay so df is the variable now let's do certain queries okay now get used to few columns here one is there is a date column the other one is a temperature max okay t max means temperature max temperature min so these are the two columns we will mostly deal with so be familiar with this and all these values are in degree Fahrenheit like you have degree Celsius in India similar way in foreign countries they go with Fahrenheit so degree Fahrenheit so these are the values okay 60 degree Fahrenheit on this specific date of 2019 uh, the maximum temperature the minimum temperature was 40 degree Fahrenheit like this so I hope you got a bit of understanding of the data now let's get started now let's say if I'm asking you select all rows where the temperature was greater than 95 degree Fahrenheit. What is the question? Select all rows where the temperature was greater than 95 degree Fahrenheit. So this has actually contained so much of data, but in Jupiter it is just showing uh, the you know top couple of them and bottom couple of them. Okay, there are actually a lot of data. Now it is telling you which are the dates where the temperature was greater than 95 degree Fahrenheit. So how do I fetch it? So I know 
what contains my entire excel sheet data frame so i'll simply take the data frame variable name here the variable name is df so i'm simply typing that df and then the condition is there so the condition will always be written inside the square bracket so what is the condition df dot tmax so when you write df dot tmax this represents your column so this is the column you saw right tmax so it is representing the column that's it okay when i'm writing df dot tmax it is just representing the column and then what is the condition it should be greater than 95 okay it should be greater than 95 now if you hit on shift enter what happened the output of this is there are only two dates where the temperature was greater than 95 getting it so we got the output if you simply change the value for example if i'm saying 90 and shift enter so there are so many days where the temperature was greater than 90 degree fahrenheit but when i say 95 there are only two days where the temperature went beyond 95 you can see 99 and 100 there are only two days in the entire year okay so this value we understood what is the logic so remember the important points first you take the data frame variable what contains your data entire data then within the square bracket you are writing the condition one part is the value part and the prior to that the, the other part is this part is your column you are mentioning the exact column where you would like to apply that condition getting it so this much is understood now let's move on to our second question find the date column only conditions as above so here the output it contains lot of data for example i have got date temperature max temperature minimum like that there are multiple columns here but i don't need all the columns i am only i only need date these are like not not useful for me i am asking you hey give me only the dates man i don't need other things now in that case how do you write the query okay again it goes with the same one exactly the same thing that we have learned just now but here i don't need all of it i just need one column called date for that what you do after the df within the square bracket you are simply mentioning the column name i am writing within single quotes i am writing date so if i run this query you can see the output has only given me two dates nothing else all these columns did not appear only column that appeared is date getting it so we got the answer for this find the date column only okay next question find the date and t max column so in this question it is telling you you get the date and also the temperature both two columns i need now if you need two columns again you go with a similar query here in the df i'm using square bracket remember anytime you have been asked multiple columns you are actually using two square brackets okay df two square brackets and inside that first you write your first column what you need then put a comma and the next column you write which is tmax so this is my entire query so if you look at it it's the same query like we learned above okay same query just for the columns we are using double square bracket here if single column single square double double let's say three am i going to put three square brackets no let's say I'm, i need three let me first show you the output shift enter so you can see date and tmax has come let's say i need one more column let's say temperature minimum or the temperature average i need then all you do simply put a comma here just more than one means you put two square brackets that's it okay so here i'm saying what is the column name t a v g okay so simply write that t a v g shift enter and you can see i've got three columns now pretty simple right pretty simple one okay only thing you need to remember first is the data frame and next with the square bracket you are writing the condition if you need columns you are putting square brackets like this otherwise the rest of the things remains same okay okay fine we got this answer now let's move on which date had the max temperature in the entire year so i am saying get me the date where we had the maximum temperature 
okay so here i'm saying on getting me get me only the date right so copy this okay so how do you write the condition here you have written 95 so it was giving you 95 anything all the dates where the temperature was greater than 95 it was showing you but here the condition is max so because it is max max temperature right so you are taking the column name first df dot max is nothing but it's a column okay here i am writing one more function called max within and parenthesis okay by writing this shift enter what happened uh, series name date date type object dot max uh, it's not greater than it should be equals to right so equals to equals to now run it shift enter so you can see i got the date 21st uh, 7th I think July 19 2019 where the temperature was the maximum okay you saw it right no, 100 degree so this was the max temperature so this is the date let's say you don't need the date you need the entire row of data you want to see the entire row of data then simply write df pretty simple shift enter so you got the entire row of data if you need specific columns I told you, you know, how do you write it after df this is how you put the format pretty clear okay fine so we got the data get me the summary of entire data so you have got so many rows of data and here the question is get me the summary the final summary so how do you get the summary take the variable which contains your data set which is df and then simply say describe okay and then shift enter so what happens if you write this let me put a parenthesis shift enter you can see i have got the count total there are 365 rows uh, minimum temperature you know is 63 uh, mean means is av average okay mean means average so average is 63 uh, maximum temperature so all the you know all for all the different rows it has given me the value so it brings you the summary of the entire data the maximum was 100 right here the maximum and the minimum this one is 83 so you got an average summary of your entire data okay this helps you sometimes to just look at the entire data as a whole and determine where to go or which channel to take now let's read the next question get me count of days in the year where the temperature was above 60 degree fahrenheit okay now for that there is another way i am simply saying rows comma columns you can give any name you like and then i'm saying equals to and taking the data frame variable and here i am going to write the condition which is nothing but df dot t max greater than 60. now here i am simply using another function called shape okay by writing shape dot shape what happens it tells you how many number of rows are there how many columns are there for example if you simply print rows shift enter it tells you the output is 196 there are 196 rows where the temperature that means 196 days where your temperature was greater than 60 let's say he wants to make greater than equals to 60 let's see the output shift enter so around 203 days where it was greater than or equals to 60 okay now if you want to print columns you can simply say columns and shift enter by doing this the column is the total number of columns we had initially right so that doesn't matter only the rows will vary right not the columns but this is another way of finding out just the count okay this is one of the way so we have learned so many things let's revise before we end this video so what are the things we have learned we have downloaded the excel file and then we have imported it to our data frame variable next what we have learned select all rows where the temperature was greater than 95 degrees for this we have used the data frame variable and within square bracket we have written the condition using the column name find the date column only then we have mentioned a square bracket in the df and written the column name if you need multiple columns then you use double square brackets and inside that you mention the columns with the condition okay which uh, which date had the max temperature then for that what you did you took the column name equals to equals to and then here you have written dot max this is the learning dot max okay with the column name and you got the output 
get me the summary of the entire data then what you did data frame dot describe pretty simple get me count of these then you have done rows comma columns equals to and the same condition with dot shape now what happens by this it has given me total rows the rows value goes to the rows variable the column value goes to the column variable so when you print this right you generally get the output shift enter you got the output where the temperature was greater than or equals to 60 so these are some of the you know sql like querying uh, from your large data set and you get some meaningful data what you need from the entire data set so this is a basic set of things we are going to learn a lot many things in the series so do continue to watch this series every day and keep practicing you know keep practicing on jupyter notebook so that it remains as a note whatever course that you have practiced till date you know everything will be there at one note so anytime you would like to revise or would like to see your code once again you know you have everything at one place if you do not know how to use jupyter notebook then you must watch my jupyter notebook playlist so thank you guys for watching we are going to meet once again in the next content so till then take care bye bye and give it a like to this video before you go thank you